Dory, as you're uh, aware, uh, I have been very vocal about the uh, impact of vision plans on our profession's brand. Uh, I should say our profession brand on optometry. Um, and I know that the AOA has taken up a, a battle, frankly, and has kind of uh, uh, begun setting the bar a little bit higher in terms of this uh, disconnect between the goals of the profession and vision plans. What can you tell our members about what the AOA is, AOA, AOA is doing? What can you tell them, our members, about what the AOA is doing relative to vision plans? When healthcare came, healthcare reform came out, we had to make a decision about how we wanted this to be played out. Um, I, I think everybody has had the experience that somebody comes into the office on a vision plan and then maybe comes back into the office and has some medical condition that you're not on that provider panel for that particular person's medical insurance. And now you have to explain to the patient, well, I can't see you. And it gets very confusing for the patient, it's confusing for the doc, it's confusing for everybody, but it's just kind of how it plays out. If, if the vision plan started in the 60s and Optometry has evolved. I mean, optometry is a very different profession than it was back in the 60s. But, you know, the plans haven't necessarily evolved. They're kind of in the same mode. And while they bring people into the office, if we were going to start from scratch and we had an opportunity to have a clean slate and start over and fix the problems, the integration so that the, the eye exam, the wellness eye exam, was integrated with a health plan would be the ideal situation. So we made the choice that that was what we were gonna do because we were going to not recreate the problem that we had in the past. We were gonna to try to fix the problem. So specifically with healthcare reform, a pediatric vision benefit came out of that. And first off, we had to fight for the fact that it be an eye exam and not a screening, which on December 16th, it came out that the guidelines are centered around eye exams. So we have that part of it. HHS also asked the American Optometric Association to chime in and say, if you had a benefit, what would that benefit look like? And so we wrote all the verbiage. We, we looked at the actuarials to look at what reimbursement might be, how much it might cost to the federal government, when at that time we thought the federal government was going to administer it. And we wrote into that language that it be an eye exam for kids and treatment of any condition related to the eyes. So that we're trying to get our toe in the door that if that exam is um, administered by a qualified health plan and you are giving the vision benefit inside that qualified health plan, that it makes sense that now you've got your toe in the door so that when that child, it's a pediatric benefit, when that child comes in for conjunctivitis, that you can treat that conjunctivitis. And now because you're in there and you've got your toe in the door, that you may have access to the adult health care because you are part of that provider panel. And, and so that's where we were going, that's what we're trying to create, that's the integration that we're trying to do. And you know, there's some scare tactics that have been started by some of the vision plans that have said, well, wait a second, you know, you're gonna take away our, our business and you're gonna, you know, all the good things that we've done for you, you're gonna threaten that. Well, they can participate. They just have to do it through a qualified health plan. And their business model is such that they won't be as um, lucrative That's in their profit. business plan, prof profitable, in, their, in that when they go through the qualified health plan. We also have to remember the benefit's only for children. It's not for adults. And so there's still places for cross cells for vision plans. And the other part of it is, is this is for the people that currently don't have insurance. So they were never in your office in the first place. So we wanted to create, a, if, if we could start with a clean slate and address the issues, we chose to start with a clean slate and address the issues and take it on rather than just recreating the same old problems.